um, yeah, so that's uh, it's lovely to follow on from Beth and the team with Verb because I know that they've been working in a very similar way to uh, some of the work that we've been doing or I've been doing with older people. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is the way we, in which uh, we've worked with other departments in the university to um, collaborate on researching and then looking at the impact of some of the work that we do, which I think is probably of interest to, to everyone really, ways that we can work together um, with other departments and particularly to evaluate our, our services and to get some really positive um, information that we can share, which is then very useful perhaps for future funding applications. So, um, so our talk's called Museums Under the Microscope, um, but although this, the, the research project was uh, very much a sort of quant a qualitative study um, rather than a scientific or, or uh, <laughs> quantitative study, I mean, the words mixed up, um, but it was certainly a very valuable exercise and it was very enjoyable mm -hmm. to work with Kate. So, should we go on to the next slide? Mm -hmm. So, a little bit about the two of us. Um, so, I'm Kate Hambly and I'm a research fellow at the Oxford Institute for Population Ageing, which is part of Kellogg College. Uh, and the institute is, is highly interdisciplinary, so I'm the only social scientist, um, which makes me feel a bit lonely at times. But we have demographers, we have economists, we have philosophers, we have a whole range of different disciplines. Um, and everyone always says to me, oh, so you look, you look at older people. Well, yes, my area is older people, but the Institute as a whole focuses on all issues related to population ageing. So that's not only the fact that we're living longer, but also we're having fewer children. So there are people studying issues around fertility as well. Uh, and in the past, I've worked on um, projects with the Dulwich Picture Gallery and the British Museum looking at um, the impact of some of their work and also looking at what an ageing population will mean for museums and galleries in the future. And I'm Helen Fantaine. For those of you that don't know me, I'm the Reminiscence Officer across the Oxford University Museums Partnership. So I've got a brilliant job because I get to work at all the museums um, and I've worked with a really fantastic uh, audience as well. Um, my, most of my time is spent at the Museum of Oxford, but now I spend one day a week working across the other partner museums. Um, and the, the project that we're particularly going to talk about today is the Memory Lane Reminiscence Group, which meets at the Museum of Oxford. It's quite a well-established group, um, and it was obvious for some time that there were lots of um, very positive outcomes from the group, some which we'd hoped for, but others which we hadn't anticipated. For instance, you know, the social aspect of things and how important it was for people to come along to the museum and meet people who they'd got to know really well over time as part of this group. And we discovered that a lot of the people were living alone, so we felt that perhaps it was helping them to overcome loneliness. But as all of you will know, it's very difficult to evaluate your own projects because obviously when you're talking to the participants, they, they, you know, they're not going to tell you the, the true picture perhaps. So, so it was really uh, fantastic to come across Kate and to work together with an external, external evaluator. So how did we connect? So um, I didn't know, I must confess, about the Oxford Institute of Population Ageing when I first came to Oxford. But I kept coming down the Bambi Road on my way back from outreach sessions and seeing the, the sign and thinking, wow, you know, uh, that sounds really interesting. So had a look on their website. And then over time, with a bit of help from Lucy as well, we managed to arrange a meeting with um, members of staff from the Institute. Mm -hmm. and, and we decided that a, a good first step in, in thinking about maybe working together would be to run a joint seminar series. So the Institute has seminars um, every week on a Thursday and they're usually convened by a member of staff or sometimes a guest um, convener. Um, so it was my turn to convene them, so I decided I would do a joint seminar series with the um, Oxford Museums Partnership um, around art museums, wellbeing and ageing. And we decided to take a slightly different approach this, that, that semester, and we had a mix of practitioner perspectives and academic papers, and we also split the, the venues, so half of them were at the Institute, where we always have our seminars, and the other half were at the Pitt Rivers, and then one was at the Museum of Oxford, which was a really interesting um, session because we also had participants from Memory Lane come and talk about their experiences engaging in the programme. Um, and from there, we started to think about how we could get funding to look at the sorts of things that Helen wanted to explore, to explore her, her, her pro programme's outcomes from the perspective of the people um, who are on the, the Memory Lane programme. Um, and we, you know, funding is always a challenge, both in, in music for museums and galleries to run programmes, but also to research those outcomes. So we, in the end, we applied for uh, John Fell fund funding, which is internal university funding. Um, and there are various uh, categories, and we decided to go for a, what they call pump prime um, funding, 
but the idea of which is that you have a small pot of money that you use to build a larger collaboration and that's what, what we ultimately did. Um, and that, that project um, ran from October to March in terms of the funding but we're, we're still working together at the moment on looking at future funding applications. So in terms of the actual project, what we aimed to do with quite a modest amount of money was to try and refine a research toolkit that I could hand on to Helen so that in future she could keep looking at her outcomes as, as she was going along. Um, in particular, we were focused, uh, keen to look at an observational um, element, an observational tool um, to capture the sort of joy in the moment um, in the sessions. Because as Helen said, often when she would then try and do any sort of evaluation herself and ask the participants for their feedback, it was always positive because it didn't want to hurt Helen's feelings. So a tool that could watch the group in a systematic way and, and record perhaps uh, not just their overall feelings about the sessions, but particular elements of the sessions which were successful or less successful was something we were yeah, explored doing. Um, but we also wanted to look at the impact of memory lane um, on, on older participants, in particular the oral history aspect, and to develop a larger follow-on proposal. So in terms of the project element, um, I did a variety of different uh, methods. So I used um, previously validated measures of well-being um, with the participants. I also surveyed them to get an idea of the demographics of the group that we were attending, because memory lane has a very large membership group. Um, and we also did focus groups and in-depth interviews as well as the observations. And what we found, what I found was um, participants were very positive about memory lane. They saw it as part of a repertoire of activities they did to stay active, mentally and physically. It was about getting out and about, um, and some of these participants had been through very challenging times. Some of them were still having some very challenging times. And some of them had uh, experienced significant events such as a bereavement or retirement, but perhaps at a time when they didn't want to retire due to ill health. And memory lane was a way of filling their life up with something interesting and engaging. Um, but you could say that about a coffee morning, for example, or any other sort of activity. But the oral history aspect was really crucial to the participants because it was a way of creating a social connection with those in the group that perhaps they might not have had otherwise. So the sharing of a memory about generally focused around Oxford or Oxfordshire, even for the, the so-called newcomers to the county who'd only been here 40, 50 years, um, they could still connect and, and, and engage. And then also memory lane feeds into a lot of the exhibitions, um, which gave the participants a huge sense of pride. And I think we've touched, several of the presentations have touched on that, that sense of pride, that sense of self-worth, um, and just feeling valued, really. So future plans. Um, as Kate said, we are hoping to go on and, and to do some more research and work together. Um, across other areas of the University Museum. So there's potentially um, an application going into the Arts Council for a project with Age UK, which mm -hmm. will be based here at the Ashmolean to work at sort of working in that, uh, I think Beth mentioned it, co-production way with, with older people and perhaps um, it's already been done with the young people, but an older person's forum so that we can explore what older people really want from the museums. <laughs> Um, and also uh, measuring the impact perhaps of some of the work that we do at the hospitals. Mm -hmm. We do quite a lot of work for quite a while now at the John Radcliffe and the Churchill and Fulbrook Centre. So looking at how that impacts on the patients, the reminiscence that we do literally by the bedside. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, the final one is I'm also considering putting in an Arts and Humanities Research Council Early Career Fellowship, which has um, not just a research element, but also a dissemination and networking element, which would be really interesting. But yeah. That's what we're hoping to do. Thank you very much. Thank you.